communicated ahead of time. So Future and Wolzark starting off both players again leading off with shards. Um, no variation, these players, just always with the shards. Uh, they have Wolzark, shards though. Yeah, I mean, Wolzark led with a blood shard, which are the only shards he has. Um, I think he has a crackling vortex or two in there. Yes. And Future led off with a shard of cunning, choosing to take a sapphire threshold. Um, as we know, a large part of his deck is based around the ability to make power make power plays with a storm cloud and he plays it out here i can see his hand i'm not yeah i mean i guess i'm convinced that that's the right play not a lot wolves can do to deal with that he plays a single cog to pedals thirst ah uh, that sure sounds like a second cog to pedals thirst is coming oh no the crackling vortex into zared charge power i see uh, well, there you go. He gets rid of a storm cloud, but at what cost? His charge power and a cog to pedals thirst there. Uh, he then plays down a tormented ritualist, and as we know, his deck is very much based on that aggressive, like minion of Yakazan and tormented ritualist style play. Uh, Future responds to this situation by playing out a, a storm cloud of his own, and then a crackling vortex to give it to. Uh, charges. Is he going to pop it now, or is he confident that it will survive another turn? It looks like he's confident it will survive another turn. That is, that is pretty ballsy here. Um, a crackling rot, which Wolzark does have, takes down the storm cloud. Uh, had that storm cloud stayed on the board, do you think this would have been just like an explosive finish, JJ? Yeah, it would have made a big difference just looking at the hand the future has here, but um, yeah, we'll never know now. We'll never know now. Uh, Woolzark swings in for four there. Uh, again, playing a shard after using a charge generating card there. Uh, and the answer to this that future has is to put down a charge hulk. This charge hulk actually has plenty of potential of racing out the tormented ritualist, especially when we see Woolzark doing things like playing his Crackling Rot and a Shard, losing one of those free charges to get unblockable. Uh, in my opinion, the unblockable is the important part on Tormented Ritualist. Of course, a Killipede drastically changes the board. Uh, <laughs> just like immediate snap change to the board. Uh, that being said, uh, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility for Future to have an answer for that. And... Future does have more cards in hand at the moment. Uh, he is running low on the health, 13 health versus his opponent's bajillion, uh, roughly. And while this has, while this is still possible for Future to win, I feel like this has gone exactly the way Wolzark would have drawn it up and exactly what Wolzark would have wanted to see. We do see yeah, the well, boulder toss here to take out the Killipede. Yeah, and in one... In one quick hit, uh, health totals are are nearly matched up. Uh, I mean, that is that is not what Wolzark wanted. Uh, what he will have the access to doing very soon is using his charge power and perhaps another cog to pedal's thirst, or just a Wakazashi ambush to get rid of that charge hulk. The charge hulk getting uh, knocked off the board here does mean uh, that. Not only can Wolzark push damage through, but he managed to get rid of a Lionel Flynn charge power and charge Hulk all at once, which is unfortunate for him. Yeah, with Wolzark's two troops to Future's none, it's definitely in Wolzark's favor, and Wolzark has presumably another removal spell or two. His deck does have Action. a lot of them. Yeah. Action. Action. Yes. Uh, so here comes an arena regular and a crackling vortex and a crackling wit from future. That arena regular will put a little bit of damage through, but it looks like no ways to drop either the ritualist or the wakazashi off the board, and both of those will be swinging in this turn for four damage. Um, this is this is a little bit of a oh a cocktail's thirst. Uh, cocktail's thirst not normally well known for its ability to just destroy an opponent's troops but uh it's doing its job here and now Wolzarg is just littering the board with uh various terrifying shin hair and subtle striker a 2-2 two, two for 2 that makes it so your opponent cannot use charge powers 
which is actually fairly brutal against Future. So it's uh, also important to note uh, that was uh, was able to draw a card off Coctopel's to Thirst as well. Yeah, because he had the four blood threshold. Um, looking at Future's hand here, I don't see an effective answer to the entire board state. It looks like this might just be uh, the end of times. The end might be nigh. He does have a chance to... Uh, he's using Crackling Bolt here. He's going to get rid of that subtle striker. Uh, and I, I would have to guess he's going to have to... No, he's going to pass off the turn. He's going to take a potential of six damage here and be on one. It would be difficult to see a potentially, comeback. Potentially lethal, right? With the Oh, yeah. Well, if ritualist. there was a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking that at the very worst, a shard makes six, but a crackling vortex would make uh, seven damage or right. even even like a crackling rod or... Well, no, you wouldn't have a target for it. So Future goes to two, and in his opponent's end phase, uses the Crackling Wit. Uh, his draw was not very good. I think with... Yeah, there's enough delay there that I can say that. That'll be a concede. That's game one going to Woolzarg. Uh, yeah, as you can see, Future is typing GG. And Future choosing to play in the next match. Uh... I think just the number of answers that Woolzark had early, pretty brutal for future there. Yeah, Woolzark's removal here really matches up well against the threats that future has. With the Cog to Petal's Thirst being able to draw a card and kill a troop, and also the Champion Power being able to kill a troop, and also the Wakazashi Ambusher being able to kill, I think, everything in the deck? Well, most of them anyway. Um, it, it it matches up pretty well in a long game for uh, for Wolzark here. <coughs> Our players are in reserves. Yeah, future. Just looking over his reserves here, I'm watching his stream. Uh, he he went through that very quickly. This might have been one of the worst matchups for him in round one. Uh, All right, so we're just gonna cut to a quick look at uh, Philon's and Berkeley's game. Are we? Wow. Okay. I have uh, no way to cut over to that. <laughs> uh. uh... Thanks for thanks for the heads up in the link there, Tech. Uh, yeah. Well, anyways, uh, Berkeley right now is swinging in with Jags, and a Gore Master, uh, which was able to be buffed up to a sixteen three with Crush. Uh, yeah. I just have no idea where you're watching this. <laughs> oh, really? I, I thought yeah. I sent a link. All right, hold on. No, you definitely didn't. You sent a link to Shosni and. Uh... Oh, this is Shosni. Okay. That is Shosni. Ah, I see. Why are there so many Gore Masters in the top eight, says YHD in that one chat. Uh, there's three decks of eight with a very powerful card in them. That's why. Uh, so, yeah, this, uh, this game's over. That was a good game. <laughs> good watch. <laughs> Looks like a, ch uh, a charge Gore Master crush just did some work, I'm guessing. Yep. Yep. Just a very powerful uh, Gore Master Ooh. swing in. How much attack was on that uh, Gore Master there, Tech? 16. Ooh. So, w what is the highest recorded in uh, one of our tournaments? Because, like, I, I've heard. 128. 128 from Cyrus on uh, the Blood Cup, right? Yeah, that's it. It would take a lot to get out of that range, I think. There are only so many ways to gain a charge in a turn. But there are other ways to boost your attack. Yeah, but I mean, like... 
There's only so much that you need. At a certain point, you're just overkilling them. Yeah, pretty much. Hey, I'm waiting for PvE to happen where, like, some ridiculous boss is going to have, like, hundreds and hundreds of uh, life to cut through. Health. Health to cut through. Health, Health HP. HP. No, no, those are not interchangeable here. Life points. No, definitely not. Life totals. No. Oh, God. <laughs> That's eight packs every time you're trying. One. Haven't you donated enough? like future is saying that he's ready just waiting on Bullzark now <coughs> all right and here we go furthermore before we start this I'm still confused as to why HD it doesn't know why there's so many gore masters in the top eight here He's trying to say that he said that's why, but no, he was definitely questioning it. He was like, why, why are there so many gore masters? I don't understand. It looks like Futures put the card guard up himself this time. Um, oh, did he? Yeah. Which is good. Uh, I can remove... No, no, no. I mean, leave, leave. it doesn't change anything. Um, but alignment... All right, whatever. So he starts off with a shard... Choosing to go first here. That's a phone. Those are things that'll ring sometimes. Turn one kill blade from Wolzark here. Yeah, that's a little bit of a frustrating troop, but Future's deck seems to revolve mostly around the power that is a storm cloud so if the storm clouds available it, the the kill blades not as scary obviously it will be a, a problem for a gore master uh, because you you would be able to get one large chunk of damage through once but then the kill blade would be like nope and there's a gore to zuma the turn two gore to zuma the one three for with Rage 1, that becomes invincible when your opponent has 10 or less health, responded to by Future's Gore Master, which is, they're similar orcs, they're both 1-3s, and gain in power quickly. Yeah, the Kill Blade is an example of a of a card where having the access to the wild and having the crush would be nice, but that's just not available to future here, at least not right now. So what do you think about that swing? Um, not holding the kill blade back. Well, it feels a lot better once that crackling rock comes down. Uh, that's probably it. With the yeah. charge power. Yep. Future using Crackling Wit here during his turn. I guess maybe looking for another shard or a card to play out here uh, past his turn. Things looking a little rough here. That Gortezuma is going to be a 3 3. The Kill Blade is going to be a 1 1 still. But it's a lethal troop that has to be dealt with. Future's getting dangerously close to that, uh, to that point where his health is too low for Gortezuma to not just rush in for the kill. Uh, and Wolves are playing a Paladin and Acropolis, a 1-4 for 3 with Life Drain, and whenever he gains health, uh, the, the Paladin pings for 1 damage onto Future's health. Uh, I mean, Future needs multiple answers here to be able to prevent going down to 10 health next turn. Uh, Crackling Bolt would actually be very strong here, the ability to remove Gortezuma. Uh, would slow down the amount of damage coming through, but it looks like he's just passing the turn off. Still seven cards in hand. It's hard to tell what he's stuck Still with. Still stuck on three. 
Yeah, that's stuck cool. on three, but he doesn't have a whole lot that's expensive. Um, so it's hard to say, right? Like, what does he have at four that he would be holding on to for? Yeah, stuck on three, but but not able to to play any of your cards. Says you either have your big bombs or that you've got all your actions that you you need to combo with your troops, and he just doesn't. Yeah. Have your troops. Uh, it is possible that it, when he goes to two damage here, to two oh, health wow. here, that his hand is four heroic outlaws. <laughs> <laughs> uh whoa there's the one the heroic outlaw with speed and direct damage future's playing this out is it four heroic outlaws <laughs> no way okay so that's two i mean he just needs one more for lethal right that's it he's that's got three. the heroic outlaw chain that's amazing wow holy <laughs> darn all four. All four. Oh. All four. Oh. What an unreal Wolzarg, Wolzarg had this game in the bag. There was almost no way to lose aside from this. The only card in his deck that costs four if you look at, or higher if you look at, well, there's one other. But if you take a look at his reserves and main board total, <laughs> that is, without a doubt, the most insane play I think I've ever seen. That really was. I, I every, can't even say that I blame Wolzarg for attacking him with everyone, because who expects the quad set of balls? Oh, man. Now, it's worth mentioning that there had he not attacked with the kill blade earlier had he not attacked with that uh paladin earlier there was a very slight possibility that i mean the health totals could have gone from sub 5 to sit you know like right. Wolzark had the chance of avoiding that entirely could have played around it yeah exactly well i mean not necessarily played around it he could have made different plays earlier on um you know, for example had had Future blocked two damage with from Gortezuma earlier on, if not yet yeah, from Gortezuma, it would have been in, he would have been in a much more difficult position later because, you know, naturally his health wouldn't have gotten that low. So he was intentionally letting some of that damage through. Those those outlaws must have been in the opening hand, and he was like, "Let's see if I can do this." Right. A killipede exactly would have been an right. issue. Uh, there was a lot of stuff that could have been direct issues there but he went for the dream and he he dreamed it he dreamed it hard 